yet another control module from China, from eBay. And this one is very, very special for all the wrong reasons. It's amazing. It's almost like an education in how not to design something. It really, it's so modular and so ill-designed. It's like a kid designed this as its first Arduino project. And it would be a nice design, but there are so many flaws. And the listing I got this from got taken down, along with all the other things they were selling. It was a bit suspicious. I was wondering if I was going to receive anything, but it did come through. And it's described as mini LED temperature controller module 0 to 1000 degrees centigrade temperature controller. And uh, it's got this high temperature thermocouple. Now, watch the display here, right? The display says... Uh, 27 degrees Celsius, it's not, it's about 20 in here. Watch what happens when I touch the thermocouple. Oh, it's shot down, it's uh, 17 degrees Celsius now and the things come in because it's not got decoupling. It's the, this is acting like an antenna. That could be noise from the power supply. It is a switching power supply, I guess, maybe. If, uh, hold on, let's get a bit of wire and bridge. Let's uh, use the meter. Set the tin amp range just and use it as a shunt. Is this a good idea? Probably not. I'll just use this to clip the zero volt. I'm pretty sure that is grounded. Let's say uh, I find something that is grounded. Like for instance, uh, let's see if my power supply hates me for this. No, it's still doing it even with the thing reference to ground. Uh, the Output zero volt rail reference to ground. It's still it may be switching noise in this little switching regulator. That's very odd, very very odd indeed. Okay, so completely unstable. It's going to display a random temperature. If anything, it comes slightly closer to the real temperature when it's grounded. But uh, that's strange. The Chip that actually does the thermocouple. Oh, let, let's go into this in more detail. Let's, uh, for a start, let's peel this film off. This is a protective film used during the manufacture and uh, during production, and then you peel it off and it gives you a nice matte display. So this thing is very modular. It's got, I'll turn it off at the moment, it's got the three relay terminals, and you know, they've done quite a good job of the relay. It looks a beefy relay, and look at the size of these, but then look at the size of the pads onto the terminals. They're absolutely tiny. Let, let's zoom in on that. You think, big pads? Good. Tiny pads? What on earth happened there? It's like, I don't know. Uh, another thing, this uh, is the sort of low-voltage side, and that could be mains. And it'd be nicer if there's a bit more separation here, and they could have done that, because they have actually used a separate connector, a separate two-pole connector, and there's loads of room they could have moved that way across there and increased that separation. They do have the tracks in the top and the bottom of the circuit board. That's quite good, but look at the size of those pads. That's just weird. The supply comes in, and it says, uh, I think it says something like, is it 12 volts? But in reality... Oh no, it says 7 to 30 volts, that's fine. Because the first thing that the supply does is it goes through a polarity projection diode, this is a win, and then it goes to this little switching converter. And the switching converter, let's find the data sheet for that. It's a XL Semi, so not, not a cheapo, it's an XL Semi uh, 40 volt buck DC to DC converter for 2 amps. And that doesn't just, uh, I'll just zoom out here so you can see it's a bit better. Uh, that doesn't just convert the uh, incoming supply purely for the logic circuitry. It's not like the 5-volt supply on its own. It is a 5-volt supply, but the relay is also operating off that 5-volt supply, which is quite interesting. And that seems pretty good. At, you know, it seems like a good start. Uh, next, and this is so modular, the next thing is that there is a little microcontroller here. I can't remember what the microcontroller is. Let's... Uh, Look through a tiny microscope and see what I can see here, little magnifier. It's an STC that's either an 8F or an 8P, 2K08S2. So a fairly competent little microcontroller. And right next to it here is another dedicated chip. And that dedicated chip is a MAX6675 and it's a thermocouple sensor with data output. It's, it operates a small serial bus here. And one of the things they do suggest is mounting a capacitor really close to the chips, the pins. But they've kind of, I think they may have actually shared the negative rail here. 
this is a very odd design. But they've not put the decoupling capacitor quite as close as it could have been. Very odd. It's fairly close, but it's not right up against the chip. Um, I wonder if that's part of the problem or if it is just radiated uh, noise reference to ground when you touch this, that it is acting as an antenna and picking up that noise. The next thing in this modular approach, and it is very, very modular, so it's got the microcontroller, it's got the serial communication to the uh, thermocouple sensor, and then it's got serial communication to another interesting chip. This is a Titan Microelectronics TM1650, which is a display and keyboard driver. And uh, I'm trying to see, are there resistors? I think they've missed the resistors off. They've got the coupling capacitors. Oh, that actually, they've got the resistor there. So they have, they've only used one line of the matrix here. And you can see which line they've used. If you press more than one button at once, it kind of garbles the matrix up a bit in here. So it's very modular. It's got the power supply module. It's got the processor. And then it's got the uh, thermocouple input module with data. And then it's got the display and button driver. And it's all in nice little chunky modules, like some would lay it out Arduino style. Plus... All the pins have been brought out as well, ground plus uh, 5 volt EA, and then P3.4, 3.3. It could be Arduino type based. Then it's got uh, another little port here with P1514131250 volt ground, then 5 volt ground P1, P, uh, P11 and P10, and then it's got plus 5 volt receive, transmit, ground, a serial communication port for the microcontroller, maybe for programming in situ or maybe maybe for test purposes, but they didn't really test this, did they? Let's turn the power back onto it and let's see one of the reasons that uh, it's also educational in the software perspective. It has no means to calibrate it that I can see. Maybe there is hidden. I've tried every button combination I could think of, found nothing. If you press the key button here, it turns the display off and on. That's all that seems to do. If you press and hold set, it displays preset one, and then you can skip up them like this, step through, but there's no button to bouncing. It often skips uh, the presets. So let's take it to preset one. And then you can set the A temperature, which is the starting temperature, which is 20 degrees Celsius, and then the B, which is 23 deg degrees Celsius, so this is for heating. So when it comes down to 20 degrees Celsius, it will turn the heater on. And when it gets up to 23, it will turn it off. And the reason I set those things is because at the moment it's falsely just being 25. When I, uh, I'll cover this over, you can see the LED light over here as well for the relay. When I put my hand in it and it falsely goes down to 16 degrees Celsius, you can see the little LED come on, the relay come in. And then when I take my hand off it and the temperature shoots back up again, it uh, goes, it turns back off again. But here's the thing. Some of these temperature sensors, modules, they, if you set the temperature in the opposite direction, if you set it with a, the start temperature is high and the stop temperature is low, then usually it uh, will switch its function. It will turn from a heating control into a compressor or refrigeration control. This one doesn't. Let's uh, do that right now. So preset one starts at 20. 23, so I'm going to actually make that a lower value. Okay, so now let's see what happens. Did I even store that? Well, let's see what happened there. Hold on a second. 20, let's take it even lower then. See what happens. Yeah, see that. It's not got anything to detect when the second temperature is set lower than the first temperature. And instead of actually doing something in a controlled manner, displaying error, it just chaps the relay on and off. And if there's a compressor attached to that, can you imagine what would be happening? It's very, very odd. Okay, so let's uh, disconnect the thermocouple now and we'll see if it detects a problem. So it's displaying, falsely, 25 degrees Celsius. I disconnect the thermocouple, it should say, error. Nope, it says it's 1,023 degrees Celsius because that's what this goes from. It goes from 0 to 1,023. Okay, no error. It's just displaying that. Okay. Whoops. So let's uh, put that back in. 
let's short the thermocouple out and see what happens. A pair of scientific scissors here. Let's short this out. And it just goes straight down to uh, about six degrees, was it? If I can get that, if I can get the scissors to go in. The scissors aren't ideal for this. Hold on, trying to make a connection. Not making a connection here, am I? I tried this earlier and it went down to a real low temperature. And now it's it's just not actually responding to it at all. I wonder why that is. Oh, that's strange. It really it went down. It interpreted it as a low temperature. I'm just trying to think what else I can short that out with. A bit of wire would be a quite handy. One moment. Let's see if I can do a more convincing job of this. Keep you in mind that the thermocouples put out of this tiny, tiny voltage in the first place. Okay, so let's short this out and see if this has a better resu result. No, it's just displaying the same 28. That's odd. Okay, let's uh, try and see if uh, it's been confused because of the... So let's uh, set that higher. No, it's not doing what it was doing earlier. Oh, that's strange. Let's turn it off and on again and see if it does it. It may just have been, I got a weird anomaly earlier on. No, it's not doing it. it the previously, when I shorted it out, it might have been the dissimilar metals of the, the scissors maybe actually caused a sort of thermocouple effect and uh, caused an erroneous reading. Oh, there it goes. No, it's down. To, it's gone down to two. So, yeah. Okay. It's, n it's not detecting that, but ultimately I suppose it could be a very low temperature uh, scenario. Very odd. So uh, things, things to learn from this that you can't just stick loads of modules together and expect it to work. You have to consider that noise can influence a very sensitive circuit like this. Um, the separation of the tracks for the relay is quite important. Um, I mean, it, other than that, it would have been a nice design. Uh, separation of the power uh, from the uh, output would have been good. Uh, it's got other things, you know, it's got a little uh, snubber diode for the uh, relay coil. It's been kind of textbook designed. It's got the little transistor for driving the relay. Um, but it's not got anything to detect we unusual situations in the software. It's not throwing up error codes. And the only uh, parameters you can really set are, if I shield this, uh, preset one and you've only got about seven preset temperatures by the look of it that you can set up or the and really seriously the it's not good to bouncing so often just jumps by several of them oh what can i say it's interesting because it's such a bad design and someone spent so much time doing that that's weird strange it's a shame because otherwise it could have been quite a nice unit but it's really not it's just a bit weird